Welcome to the introduction video about the OpenSSL software suite. OpenSSL is an open source implementation of the Secure Sockets layer, also known as SSL, and the Transport Layer Security TLS protocols. These protocols are used to establish a secure connection between two devices over the internet. OpenSSL provides a library of cryptographic functions that can be used to secure communication channels and authenticate the identity of devices. It also includes a command line tool that can be used to perform various cryptographic operations, such as generating certificates and keys. Here is a brief overview of how a client might authenticate with a server using transport layer security. First, a client sends a request to a server to establish a secure connection. Then, the server responds by sending off a copy of its TLS certificate, which includes the server's public key. The client then verifies this certificate, and if it is valid, generates a random number, the pre-master secret, and encrypts it using the server's public key. Then the client sends the encrypted pre-master secret to the server, where the server then again validates it, and decrypts the pre-master secret using its private key, and uses it along with another randomly generated number to generate a master secret. This master secret is then used by the client and the server, to generate session keys, which are then finally used to encrypt all the data between the two devices. On a lot of Linux distributions, OpenSSL is installed by default. However, should it not be installed, it can generally be installed from the package manager. On Ubuntu, just <coughs> run first apt-get update to update your package registry, and finally just run apt install OpenSSL, and OpenSSL will be installed. To install OpenSSL on Windows, one way is to compile OpenSSL from source, however that is quite cumbersome and not very easy. Another way, which is much easier, is to just install Git, which is useful anyways, and comes with a version of OpenSSL which is compiled by them and very easy to use. It also comes with a command line which can be used to run OpenSSL, which is a bit easier than using the Windows command line. To install Git, first go to the Git website and download it. Then follow the installation instructions of the installer. As you can see here, you can deselect almost all optional components and only install Git with OpenSSL. Finally, you can open the Git bash, which is the terminal, and use OpenSSL as you would use on Linux. After opening a terminal, you are greeted with the command prompt. Here you can type the name of command to be executed. To run OpenSSL, type OpenSSL followed by the name of the subroutine in the terminal. Generally, you need to pass additional parameters and flags. Note, in the command line, all parameters are just simply separated by spaces. However, if you need to give the name of a parameter, you prepend that by a single dash. More examples will be given. OpenSSL has various functionalities which you can access using the following. For example, the Gen RSA utility will let you generate RSA private keys. The RSA utility performs various operations on RSA keys, such as generating a public key from a private key or displaying key details. The OpenSSL rec command generates certificate signing requests, also known as CSRs. The X509 command generates a self signed SSL TLS certificate, or it can also be used to display information about certificates. The OpenSSL password utility generates password hashes and checks the strength of passwords. The OpenSSL encoding utility encrypts and decrypts files using a symmetric key. And finally, the OpenSSL digest utility generates a message digest of a file, also known as a hash. These are just a few examples of the commands that are available in the OpenSSL command line interface. There are many others that can perform a wide range of cryptographic operations. One important use of this tool is to generate certificates, which can be done either by yourself or by a third party. Generally, if you want the certificate to be used publicly, you should have it done by a third party so that it can be verified by other people. To create a self-signed certificate using OpenSSL, you will need a private key and a certificate signing request. The private key is used to sign the certificate and the certificate signing request contains information about the certificate that you are requesting. Here is a general outline of the process. First, we generate a private key. To do this, we use the OpenSSL GenRSA command, as can be seen here.
Secondly, we generate a certificate sign request using the OpenSSL REC command. You will be prompted to enter information about the certificate you are requesting. For example, you have to supply the country of origin, the city, as well as the name of the organization, and if you want the certificate to be used on a website, also the domain name. Once we have a, cert a certificate signing request, we can sign the certificate. To create a self-signed certificate, you can use the OpenSSL X509 command. As we can see here, you will need to specify the private key and the certificate sign request as input. As a result, we'll obtain a certificate PEM file, which contains the following. Alternatively, if you are requesting a certificate from a certificate authority, also known as CA, you will need to submit your certificate sign request to the CA and follow their instructions for obtaining a signed certificate. The CA will use their own private key to sign the certificate. This private key should be recognized by other devices on the internet so that they can validate your certificate. If you ever want to obtain details about a certificate, you can use the OpenSSL X509 command to inspect them. As we can observe here, by using this command, we can obtain all the information about a certificate.pem file, which shows the subject, issuer, start date, and end date of the certificate, as well as the public key information and certain extensions. However, if you only wish to visualize a subset of those fields, there are some other options that you can use with the OpenSSL X509 command. The subject displays the subject field of the certificate. This contains, for example, the domain for a website certificate, or maybe an email for certain other certificates. Then you have the issuer, which is just um, also kind of subject information, but about the certificate authority that signed the certificate. Then the start date and end date flags display the validity period of the certificate. And finally, the hash flag will display the hash value of the certificate, which can be used to compare certificates. Let's suppose you clicked on a website where you would like to make a, pur a purchase. As we've discussed earlier, you would be safe if you knew that your data is encrypted and is relayed to the correct entity. How do you know whether this is the correct website? You have to inspect the certificate to ensure that it was generated by a trusted source and that it was supplied by the correct entity. The OpenSSL command line interface includes a command called s underscore client that can be used to probe and connect to TLS servers. This command establishes a connection to a specific server and performs a TLS handshake. It will then print a bunch of information about that server. As we can observe in this example, we establish a connection to the TLS server at google.com on port 443, which is the default port for HTTPS. If the connection is successful, the command will display the details of the TLS handshakes, including a negotiation cipher suit and a certificate chain. You can also use the OpenSSL as client command to save the certificate of the website, which can be done using this command. It will then save the certificate of the website you provided into a PEM file. The s underscore client command is a useful tool for testing and debugging TLS connections. It can be used to verify that a TLS server is configured correctly or troubleshoot issues with TLS connections. Like any tool, the OpenSSL commands and library can be used for both legitimate and malicious purposes. On the one hand, OpenSSL is a widely used and trusted tool that is used by many organizations to secure their communication channels and protect sensitive data. It is an essential tool for maintaining the security and privacy of online communication. On the other hand, the powerful cryptographic functions provided by OpenSSL can be used by hackers to perform various attacks, such as man-in-the-middle attacks, certificate spoofing, and password cracking. For example, a hacker could use OpenSSL command line interface to generate a self-signed SSL slash GLS certificate and use it to impersonate a legitimate website, or to decrypt and encrypt data transmitted over a secure connection. It is important to use OpenSSL and other security tools responsibly and in accordance with the laws and regulations of your jurisdiction. If you are not sure how to use a particular tool or command, it is best to seek guidance from a trusted source or an expert. If you are interested in using OpenSSL ethically, here are some ways you can do it. Testing the security of SSL or TLS connections. As already seen above, the OpenSSL S underscore client command can be used to connect to a TLS server. And similarly, the OpenSSL S underscore server command can be used to test clients. OpenSSL can also be used to verify the strength of passwords. The OpenSSL password command can be used to generate a hash of a password and verify its strength. By comparing the hash to a list of known, weak, or commonly used passwords, you can determine whether the password is likely to be easily guessed or cracked by an attacker. Finally, you may decrypt or encrypt data. The OpenSSL ENC command 
can be used to decrypt data that has been encrypted using a symmetric key. However, you of course need to know the key first. By attempting to decrypt the data, you can test the strength of encryption and determine whether the data is potentially vulnerable to an attack. Let us conclude by summarizing what we've learned so far in this video. We have started with a brief introduction to OpenSSL and how it works. We have seen that it is a piece of open source software that allows us to establish secure connections over networks. Secondly, we have seen how this tool can be used to create, manage and verify certificates and test connections to SSL servers. During the introduction to the command line interface, we also displayed ways to encrypt and decrypt data, as well as verifying the strength of the passwords. Finally, we have seen that OpenSSL can be used for legitimate purposes, such as establishing secure connections and managing certificate, but it can also be used for malicious purposes, such as certificate spoofing and other types of cybercrime. It is important to use OpenSSL with caution and follow best practices to ensure the security and integrity of the information being transmitted.